Well, folks, it is amazing to watch as the media continue to treat Hamas as though it is a semi-reliable source, that Israel should give them all sorts of resources, and probably it'll be fine. Uh, Hamas, they just lie routinely, so openly that when they're ever called on it, they get mad. The media continue to parrot the lies that Hamas tells, and they are liars. I mean, it is amazing. It is truly amazing to watch the PR battle that has erupted on social media. First of all, there's no question that algorithmically, Hamas supporters are getting a giant boost right now. There's just no question that that's happening on a wide variety of platforms. Unfortunately, I think including X, but certainly including TikTok. Beyond that, Hamas, I mean, they just openly lie about things. So much so that yesterday, a Hamas spokesperson was on the BBC. The BBC, of course, is a Hamas-friendly outlet. They're perfectly willing to run with nearly anything Hamas says. But even the BBC was like, um, what? So here's what happened. The Hamas spokesperson tries to claim that they didn't kill civilians. The BBC points out, um, you did. You killed 1,500 civilians. And the Hamas guy gets up and walks out. It was a military operation. It was directed for military purposes, for the military sites. Well, hundreds of but, civilians were killed. Sorry. And for the military soldiers who imposed sanctions and collective punishment against our people. And I think from the first moment we declared that this operation is not was not directed to the civilians. But I can confirm and assure again and again that there was no command, no command to kill any civilians. Think How do you justify killing people as they sleep, you know, families? How do you justify I, I killing want, hundreds I, I of want people to stop this uh, interview. In, I want to stop this interview. Of course, he wants to stop the interview because that's the most obvious question in the entire world. By the way, they found materials literally on the bodies of Hamas terrorists telling them to rape, telling them to murder. I mean, this is like, they're liars. They're liars. And the fact there's so many people who are willing to parrot the lies is the full-scale anti-Semitism. So the, at the same exact time that, that these lies are being told, the Biden administration, again, there's a lot of mixed signals. Joe Biden is meeting with American Muslim leaders to try to placate their fury over the Gaza war. That is according to the Times of Israel. He held an unpublicized meeting with Muslim American community leaders. The move comes amid growing fury among Arab and Muslim Americans over Biden's support for Israel's military response to the Hamas onslaught. The president came under particular fire yesterday for saying he has no confidence in the death tally from Hamas. Okay, the, the, the fact that Biden is meeting with all of these supposedly angry leaders is, is totally crazy. If you're angry about Israel responding to Hamas, I have a solution for you. Call for Hamas to surrender. Hamas surrenders, it's over today. Today, it all ends right now. All Hamas's leadership have to do, come out with your hands up. That's all. And then this is all over. The hostages go free. The electricity turns, gets turned back on. That, that's the next thing that happens. Everyone knows this. But instead, Joe Biden is meeting with these American Muslim leaders. And he's also promulgating, again, the entire left continues to promulgate the lie that the only way out of this in the end is going to be a two-state solution, that ac there are actually millions in the West Bank and Gaza Strip in Judea and Samaria, that there are millions of Palestinians who are just itching for peace, that, they, that every government they've ever had actually has betrayed them, every single one of them, which is a weird take because, you know, we have tape from places like Ramallah. Here is a protest yesterday in Ramallah. Ramallah is in the West Bank. Ramallah is not in the Gaza Strip. It is the capital of the Palestinian Authority. There's a massive protest yesterday in Ramallah. You can see it's all young men, literally all young men, zero females, all young men. And they are chanting, quote, if you have a rifle... You should either kill a Jew or give it to Hamas. That's what they're chanting in Arabic. If you have a rifle, you should either kill a Jew or give it to Hamas. These are the uh, these are the so-called peace partners. The West can keep lying to itself, but they are in fact lying. In action, the West is going to have to respond. In action, the West is going to have to respond because again, you can pretend it away, but then reality hits you square in the face. That's what's happening to the Biden administration with regard to Iran right now. First, when you're running a business, your employees can create all sorts of interesting situations. You don't think about HR very much because when you start a company, you're thinking about, you know, getting product to places on time, providing a good or service. You're not thinking about what can your own employees do that exposes you to liability. This is why you need to talk to Bambi. Bambi gives you access to your own dedicated HR manager starting at just 99 bucks per month. This person is available to you by phone, email, and real-time chat. They'll help you run onboarding for employees, terminations, performance reviews. With Bambi's HR Autopilot feature, you can automate important HR practices like employee training and feedback procedures. All of Bambi's HR managers are based in the United States and can support the nuances across all 50 states. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand per year. Bambi starts at just 99 bucks per month. Schedule a free conversation today. See how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now. Type Ben Shapiro under podcast when you sign up. Again, that's Bambee.com, B-A-M-B-E-E.com. Type in Ben Shapiro to get started. HR, 
It's something that you don't think about, but it can be your biggest liability. Get it taken care of today. Go to Bambi.com. Type in Ben Shapiro under podcast when you sign up. I talk about preborn a lot on the shows. You know, I believe in their mission. I know you do too. Who wouldn't want to help moms and their children in crisis? Preborn is the largest provider of free ultrasounds in the United States. They connect with women who are considering abortion, offer them a free ultrasound so they can hear their child's heartbeat. This divine connection has proven to double the probability that a mom will choose to carry her child to term. Every day, preborn networks of clinics save 200 babies' lives, but it doesn't stop there. They offer mothers, maternity clothes, doctor visits, and the support they need to raise a child after giving birth. It's an incredible organization I'm proud to stand behind. You can support preborn yourself with a gift of just 28 bucks. This will cover the cost of one free ultrasound and could save the life of an unborn child. To donate, just dial pound 250, say keyword baby. That's pound 250 baby, or donate securely at preborn.com slash Ben. That's preborn.com slash Ben. Go check them out right now. That's preborn.com slash Ben. Once again, preborn.com slash Ben. Doesn't cost a lot of money to save the life of a baby. Let mom see the ultrasound. She'll realize that what's growing inside her is a life that means something to her. To donate, dial pound 250 and say keyword baby. And meanwhile, the United States, again, they continue, we, we, the, the Biden administration continues to play this dumb double game where they pretend a thing that is, is happening is not happening. So yesterday, the Biden administration, for some unknown reason, decided to allow the Iranian foreign minister to arrive on American shores and then threaten the United States from the United Nations. A, an institution that should go the way of the dodo bird. We should blow up the building. We should salt the earth. The UN is a garbage organization. It's been a garbage organization for decades. It's a mouthpiece for third world dictatorships. In any case, here was Iran's foreign minister yesterday warning the United States that if Israel goes into the Gaza Strip, the fire will spread. Well, by the way, if they, if they really want to threaten the United States, listen, we don't want war with Iran because it costs time and resources and money and people. We don't want any of that. But let's just be clear about this. If Iran started up with the United States, that war would be over in about a millisecond. The United States military is not to be trifled with. And the fact that you have these tin pot morons who are out there threatening the United States is deeply insulting and speaks to the weakness that they perceive in the American body politic and among our political class. Here's Iran's foreign minister. Today in New York and the United Nations, I say frankly to the American statesmen who are now managing the genocide in Palestine that we do not welcome to expansion of the war in the region. But I warn if the genocide in Gaza continues, they will not be spared from this fire. It is our home, and West Asia is our region. West Asia is their region. They, they own it. Leave it alone. Uh, by, by that, they mean presumably they also want the destruction of the state of Israel. Well, as it turns out, Iran has now been tar targeting Americans throughout the Middle East. In fact, over the course of the last few weeks, there have been double digit strikes on American facilities by Iranian proxy groups. John Kirby was asked about that yesterday. He said, how exactly is Joe Biden pushing back on Iran? First, first Kirby admitted that U.S. troops have actually sustained serious brain damage from from these particular strikes. Here he was yesterday admitting the situation. The president said that if Iran or its proxies attacked U.S. troops, that we would respond. So what is he waiting for exactly? He did say that. Where's the response? He said that. And he said that we so will... Repeating the warning is the response? Jack, come on now. It's not what? a question. I'm not going to telegraph punches here from the podium. We have responded and retaliated in the past quite aggressively. In fact, back in March, and as the president said... Uh, we will not hesitate to protect our troops and our facilities, but we're going to do it at a time of our choosing and a manner of our choosing. And the decision to do it, if we do it, is his as commander in chief and his alone. OK, so what exactly is that response? Well, yesterday we found out a little bit. The U.S. carried out airstrikes, according to CNN, targeting two facilities linked to Iranian backed militias in eastern Syria on Thursday, according to a statement from Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. Following a series of drone and rocket attacks against U.S. forces in the region. The statement said the facilities have been used by the IRCG, uh, that, that would be the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard, and affiliated groups. The strikes were carried out by a pair of F-16 fighter jets using precision-guided munitions. They targeted a weapons and ammo storage facility in Abu Kamal near the border between Syria and Iraq. Now, Austin is attempting to downplay the conflict because he doesn't want to be drawn into an open conflict here that would cost, as we say, time, money, and blood. Austin described the strikes as narrowly tailored in self-defense. He said they were different from the ongoing conflict in Gaza, which, of course, is a lie. I mean, what's happening right now is that Iran is prodding at Americans in an attempt to get America to tell Israel to stop in the Gaza Strip, which is not going to happen. 
He directly accused Iran then of having a role in the attacks on U.S. forces, saying, quote, Iran wants to hide its hand and deny its roles in these attacks against our forces. We will not let them. So again, the Biden administration overall doing the right thing, you know, pushing Iran off the ball, telling them do not, do not screw. But when the rubber is going to meet the road, that's going to be if Israel goes into Gaza, which presumably will happen over the course of the next week or so by, by all available information. When Israel goes into the Gaza Strip, if Hezbollah opens up a second front on the Israeli border, will the United States stop Hezbollah from doing that? Because Hezbollah is an existential danger to the state of Israel. It's not just that they have 200,000 rockets pointed at various sites around Israel, threatening tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Israeli lives. They also have terror tunnels that presumably strike into Israel as well. They have sleeper cells that they've been working with in Judea and Samaria, the West Bank. If the United States wishes to keep that conflict contained, the United States is going to have to get directly involved probably at that point, because if they don't, then Israel is going to go whole hog. It's either going to be the United States containing the thing or it's going to be Israel just devastating its opposition and maybe bringing in Iran, which then may go regional. That, that right there is the biggest problem. So the Biden administration needs to continue to demonstrate a stiff upper lip and a stiff spine. If they do, this thing will remain contained, which is in the best interest, certainly of the United States. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 